Hey everybody, and welcome to the Cinefix Top 100, the show that's only an island if you look at it from the water. I'm Clint Gage, and joining me as always from the Oceanographic Institute on the mainland, Alex Stedman. How you doing? I'm good. Excited to talk about this one. What is it you're studying over there on the mainland these days? Sharks. Sharks? Yeah. Still? Right. Yeah. Still good sharks. News. Always that's sharks. That's great. It's going to come in handy today. Yeah. Uh, and also, of course, joining us, my lawyer, Bruce. Cal, what's happening? How's it going, dude? It's Boy, going. Great. It's going. Hell yeah. I also... Very excited to talk about this movie today. We're, we're winding down our community season. We got just a couple episodes left in season two here. But we got a real, a real corker today. A real 25-footer. Three tons on this movie. Easily. We're talking about Jaws. Monster. I can go slow ahead. Come on down and chump some of this shit. Much as I, I hate to give Dan and his precious little algorithm any sort of credit, like, well, he's back on his broken clock shit. Again yeah. today well, I, this is this this movie is incredible. I yes. never would have thought of it as a community movie either, but it definitely is. Yeah. yeah. No, it, it really is. I mean, this movie had a walk so the Meg could run. Uh, yeah, that's that's the real key to yeah. Jaws' legacy is yeah, the Meg, Meg to the trench. trench. Yeah. You know? yeah. Well, I mean, Absolutely. you want to tell you, it's, it brings the whole world together to fight uh-huh. the shark on that one? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, anytime you can get Statham to karate chop anything, <laughs> sharks, octopi, whatever. And we have Jaws to thank for that. So we'll get into that in a moment. But uh, Jaws, of course, 1975 from Steven Spielberg, uh, based on the novel by Peter Benchley that I think everybody in 1974 read. And then no one after. And then, yeah, and then everybody just <laughs> Everybody brought it to the do you actually know This anybody, is a bad idea. Did it, do you actually know anybody who's ever read the novel Jaws? It was for work. Yeah. Oh, for like the what, what's the difference? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's super different. Is it? Yeah, it's super different. But it's, okay. there's some I guess key, I can watch the episode. Key differences. Yeah, it was actually, I think it was one of the first ones that we ever did. It might have been the first episode of What's the Difference that we ever did. Yeah, uh, Roy Scheider, Richard Dreyfuss, Robert Shaw, one of the, one of the greatest three men on top billing yeah. of all time, I think. Like, the three of them are so incredible. Uh, and, of course, a mechanical shark that wouldn't cooperate, starring alongside them, uh, which is one of the most famous things about the movie, uh, that the shark didn't work. It's incredible. But, like, we'll get into that more later, I'm sure. But spoiler alert, I guess, for the end of this, this episode. Um, I love this movie this movie is so good i forgot how much i like this right? this is one of those ones where i'm like i saw this in my childhood I, another shout out to my grandma my grandma showed me this hell yeah and i just yeah, my grandma shows me the coolest movie shout yeah. out to you bev i've just gotten a couple of shout outs on the this show this is the I, third one i think yeah, i think yeah. i brought her up in rear window and jackie brown um <laughs> i love the idea of you watching rear window jackie brown and <laughs> grandma on the same day she's cool man that's, that's a cool as hell grandma yeah yeah uh, no i mean this movie like it we talk about influential movies, and I think this one, it's up there. Well, we started the season with one, right? With, with Seven, Seven Samurai. Samurai. Yeah. And I, I think there's even, I even, there's a couple moments in this movie that I made a note of. I was like, this is just like Seven Samurai. Like the way that it's blocked and the way that he uses foreground and the way that, that characters are moving all over the screen in this movie. Like it's, it's one of these that like it's kind of, it's, it's such a proto Steven Spielberg movie. Like you can see little baby Steven Spielberg oh, taking I, his first steps. I don't even think this is proto. I think that this is like this is fully for, formed. Yeah, this yeah. is fully formed Steven yeah. Spielberg. There's nowhere to go. I mean, but it's also it's like the start of his blockbuster filmmaking. Though. Absolutely. Yeah. So start I guess, of blockbuster I guess like what I'm trying to say, period. I guess like yeah, what I'm trying yeah. to say is like, is there anything that is unequivocally, unabashedly improved that came after Jaws? Like how so? In his work, you yeah. Mean? I, I think probably. I think there's nothing you know, about this movie feels immature to me. No, what I'm trying no, to say. not not even a little bit. Yeah. Um, but there's like. I mean, I, I think it's it's probably just budgets and evolving technology and yeah. stuff like that. That like, no, he know. grows as an artist, but yeah. like, this isn't like him finding his footing. This is like fully formed Steven Spielberg, just absolutely crushing it. Let's yeah. see him do more horror, horror. Like, why did he leave that behind? That is a that is a conversation that that for <laughs> cash. Finger thing. World World War Two producing I mean, World he, War Two series. He kind of hovered. He hovered. He's got pulled. He, he had his hands pretty heavily in the poltergeist. Yeah, supposedly, yeah. yeah. It's it's hard to have the restraint that he has in Jaws though when you're doing a horror movie like it it's that takes a lot of ability as a horror filmmaker. It, it's quite easy when the shark is broken. When the shark, is <laughs> yeah. that kind of helps. Yeah, yeah. The one character that has to stay underwater yeah, the yeah. whole time. Yeah. Actors, am I right? But when did when did you so you first watched it with your with your grandma? How how young were you when you saw it? Super young. Ironically, like, like I have very similar memories to this as like when I saw The Exorcist. So I saw them like right around the same yeah. time. And at the same time, like I think that The Exorcist is funny. And, <laughs> you know, just, just, just cursing children will always make me laugh. Yeah. And the first time I saw Jaws on like my dad's like 32 inch tube tr- Trinitron television, just didn't look that scary. You know, just like 
Shark looked fake. Kind of laughed like he just kind of like, yeah, like like up the like plop, plops up plops on the, boat. Onto the yeah. back of the orca. Yeah. yeah, on the orca. Like I thought that was funny. Fast forward 15 years, and like the independent theater in my college got a co- like got it. Had a 35 millimeter print. Went to go see it in a cinema the way it's supposed to be viewed. Scared shitless. Yeah, yeah. it's an incredible. I I I saw it too young. Um, I, my, the story, I've talked about it on, on the channel before, but like, I don't know if I've told you guys a story about like how I realized I wanted to, to work in movies was I saw Jaws and I was like, oh, I want to study sharks. I'm going to be an oceanologist. This is great. Really? And then I saw, uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark and I was like, nope, I'm going to be an archaeologist. That's, uh, that's exactly what I want to be. And then I saw Jurassic Park and it was like, nope, paleontology. That's the thing. And then at some point I realized the same guy made all three of those movies and I was mm-hmm. like, ah, no, movies are the thing. Got it. By the way, I also wrote I wanted to be a like a dinosaur hunter yeah. when I and like when I was in kindergarten because exactly. yeah, because of Jurassic Park. Yeah, but I I hadn't seen it on the big screen until just this last summer. It was the first time I saw it on the big screen, and yeah, it it hits. It, yeah, it, it completely I mean, never it, it completely big changes big the way you sound, watch it. Yeah. yeah, I've never seen. I've seen it with people too, like with one. Like obviously, I watched it with my grandma. I've watched it with like a friend or two, but I've never watched it with the crowd, which I think is a shame because mm-hmm. it's a very good yelling at the screen movie. Well, and that that jump scare, the head coming out of the boat. The hole in the boat. Oh my god! Like, it scared it's, my dog. It's, yeah, yeah. Like, it as well. Jump it should. out of my dog. Because there's a scream that happens like a underwater somehow, and it's not it's not Richard Dreyfuss's character, and it's obviously oh. not the dead guy, but it's the sound design of it is it's one of the it's one of the best jump scares ever. <laughs> Like I was when we were watching it on the big screen last summer. I was sitting next to my wife, and I even she was already getting mad at me because I, there were other people in the theater doing it, but like saying quotes along with it, and like, and I elbowed her at something. Like, here's one of the best jump scares of all time coming up. Oh, what you, you should have left her organic. No, and it got her. Yeah, it still got her. Yeah, like, what are you talking about? Oh, Jesus. So. <laughs> that's so good. But uh, I mean, getting into the pedigree of this movie, I mean, this this is. This is another one that's a little, it's, it's hard to say anything new about this movie, right? Like, mm-hmm. this is a movie that people have obviously been talking about since it came out. There's so many of the things that, like I already mentioned, the, the, the shark didn't work. And that's one of the, the most hilariously famous stories about, about the movie. Is like, that's what, well, that's what see it because it didn't work and they had to figure out other ways to Can you imagine if it did, though, how much worse the movie could have been? Yes. I, I want to ask that question later. I, we'll get into the, we'll do we'll some brilliant moments. And, and there are a couple of bigger questions I want to ask about this movie as, instead of just breaking it down. Because like, like we did on Monty Python and like we've done on some of the other, like the comedy episodes, you know, it's hard not to just go through every square inch of this movie and say like, that's brilliant. That's also brilliant. There's another brilliant thing, <laughs> particularly because everybody's already pointed them out, you know, a hundred times. So like, you know, questions like, is Bruce the shark? breaking the most fortuitous thing that has ever happened in, in yeah. history. You know, it's, uh, it's things, things like that that, we, uh, that I want to talk about. For Steven Spielberg, yes. I suppose we can get into it right now. I mean, we can, no. we can, let's, let's, let's get into a few, um, I mean, some more of the pedigree, some more of the people involved in this. We already talked about the cast, Richard, uh, Richard Dreyfuss, Roy Scheider, Robert Shaw. Like, these, these oh. three characters are so, like, wonderfully painted mm-hmm. that... I mean, you know, every like every scene is like iconic, right? Like the introduction of Quint, Quint with the like the nails on the the chalkboard, chalkboard. right? You know, and then just like you know, just the grizzled old like seaman who is just like, I'll get him for you. Which, by the way, is this the movie that also made nails on a chalkboard iconic? Am I wrong about that? No, nails on a chalkboard have always sucked, but. <laughs> which, by, which, by the way, have you ever actually scratched a chalkboard? It, it Dude, hurts. It, it it's hurts. Than it's hurting, it sounds. Yeah. It's hurting me now. Just it's literally saying the phrase now. Oh. It, like it hurts my fingers. Yeah. Not... <laughs> you all know me. They could have just been like random dudes who we didn't care about, but that whole scene where they're getting plastered and just yeah. literally and they, sharing their scars. Right. Like, the, so that important. scene where they're where they're comparing scars and the USS Indianapolis speech and like it's Oh, it's don't a, forget about the uh the soft hands. Yeah, 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 all of that. I mean, but but you go from you start with these three characters that are wildly different people, right? Like even even and how they establish it. Like we when we meet Hooper too, it's like, are you are you rich? Oh, uh, yeah. 
Yeah. How much? Me or the whole family? It's <laughs> just like <laughs> super casually. Rich enough to make sharks my hobby. Yeah, man. exactly. <laughs> um, and then the whole, you know, you've been, you got city hands, you've been counting money all your life. Yeah. Like that, that dynamic. And then for Brody, who's one of my favorite characters of all time, like for him really? to just be, I, he's so great. He hates he's, the water. He hates the water. It's, just, but, it, and I use the line and write him up. It's my favorite line. We'll get, we'll talk more about it later if we want to, but the, you know, it's only an island if you look at it from the water is, is such a perfect encapsulation of who this guy is. Like, but it's also presented as a, he's drunk and he's, he's been tricked into getting on a boat and he says it. So it's like a funny little, little bit of logic that doesn't quite add up, but also it's like so telling about his character like what he's willing, how he's willing to shift his perspective so much away from the things that he's afraid of so that he can do his job and protect people and all that stuff. It, it's an, he's an incredible character. I love him so much. But putting all three of them at odds until we get to that moment where they're literally sharing. And the fact that we cut away to, to Roy Scheider to where he's looking at his appendectomy scar and he's like, no, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's, it's, it's so good. But like gradually tweaking all of these people that are so disparate um, into like, forming a team and like getting on the same page in that moment is like that, that seems. I mean, it's like, to me, I think of this, I think of it as a horror movie. It's definitely a horror movie. Oh it's yeah. Also, it's, it's a great drama. Yeah. Like the shark, it's a shark drama. That's what I would say it is. Yeah. But I mean, it, it, the it, it, it does drama. all the shark things drama. that a slasher does. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, like Roy Scheider, 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 I'm going to go in in it. I'm going to Scheider, Roy Scheider, yep. Bob Fosse. <laughs> if you need to call him Bob, just call him Brody for the yeah. rest of the. Uh, he, uh, you know, he's a perfect final girl. Mm -hmm. You know, and um, like I really like his whole arc of, um, you know, just I hate the water, but he overcomes it and gets on that, yeah. gets on that boat, and like they all have it, right? Like Quint is like just hates sharks, mm -hmm. so he's just there to like. Sharks name. literally ate 800 of his friends. Well, he, and that's why I love that scene, though, not to jump into art of, art of a scene, but, like, he could have just been this kind of, like, hard-headed, stubborn, I want to hunt sharks because it's manly and cool, yeah. but, like, you totally understand why he hates sharks. That's a horrific he's, thing he's that got happened a reason. to him. He's, well, got a, yeah. he's got a reason that softens the edge a little, a little bit, and you and then you start to understand why he's so mean and why he's so so crass and, and, like, and so all of, the, all of the rough edges that you kind of rub you the wrong way about him, they go, they go away immediately. I mean, and you understand everything. That's a real thing that happened, by the way, the whole Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh my so God. So, fun thing about that yeah. is, is, right, like, that's like the, I feel like that, that monologue, the USS Indianapolis monologue, is kind of like the uh, uh, opening scroll in Star Wars, which is like, you know, the story is that like Brian De Palma wrote the opening scroll mm -hmm. in Star Wars because he was just like, George, this sucks. He's like, making fun of George. <laughs> yeah, he's, <laughs> right? Well, um, you know, um, the USS Indianapolis speech was written by John Milius, which is the guy mm -hmm. that went on to direct, uh, write and direct like Red Dawn and a couple other things. Yep. Very far to the right lately. But like, he, he was like, he was like that weird militaristic conservative he was, guy. He was that, also like, the basis for John Goodman in The Big Lebowski. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's him. He Walter Solchek yeah. wrote the monologue. He wrote the Indianapolis monologue. Yeah. And, and then they had to film it twice because Robert Shaw was too drunk. He, he decided to get really drunk. Like, like for real. Why does everyone think they can do that? I don't know. You can't I love do that. It. I love gotta that story. Get in character. Gotta get in character. He was drunk anyway, yeah. and that was a, he was he was probably drunk every day. Yeah. But that was the one, the important one that they needed oh a retake. God. No, by the end of that first dawn, lost a hundred men. I don't know how many sharks, maybe a thousand. I don't know how many men, the average six an hour. We do need to talk about John Williams. Oh, he's on his, he's on his stuff, man. Yeah. He's on, like, he's John Williams, so he doesn't miss. I would say this is one of his best scores, if not I think his so. best. Yeah. Like, we always talk about the theme, the da 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 but right. it's the whole entire score. There are times where it, like, swells into this adventure crescendo. There are times where it's ethereal when the shark explodes. There are times when it sounds like a weird underwater scream. Yeah, <laughs> which, which really works because yes. it scared me and my dog yes, and does. your wife. I don't yeah. know if that was his doing or the sound design. Yeah. I'm, I'm trying to think of a movie he would have scored before this. That would have, like... Like that would have made him That's a good question. not necessarily a household name, and I'm looking it up right now. But because yeah. the score is so memorable in this, and yeah. it does a lot of heavy lifting, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, it's just a simple like two note thing for the most yeah. part. Yeah, like it's it's I can't remember what the musical term for it. It's like minor thirds or something. Like it, there's a it's it's like the most it's a, it's the line from the movie where uh, Hooper's talking to the mayor about 
what a shark is. He's like, it is a simple machine. It is an eating machine. All it does is swim, eat, and make little baby sharks. That's it. And like the just the simplicity of, and frankly, the entire movie. Like that's it, it's a shark. Like it's just it's simple. All it does is move straight ahead and scare the shit out of you. Like that's it. I also and make bad sequels. Not to not to not talk about John Williams too, but this like completely changed the public perception of sharks in a bad yeah, way. Yeah, the, the book did that too. Peter Peter yeah. Benchley, the guy, the author of the of the novel, um, was uh, and and one of the writers on on the screenplay. Uh, he he spent like the rest of his life, or he's spent the years since. Like guys, I didn't mean to do this. My Take bad, it to easy sharks. on sharks, please. <laughs> <laughs> Because like, isn't there like some statistic that more people die from vending machine accidents than from yeah. shark attacks? Like, well, it's my like my that. favorite my one of my favorite statistics of all time is in the movie too. It's like most shark attacks take place in less than three feet of water, ten yeah. feet from Which the beach. Which is crazy. Yeah. But that's where all the people are. Yeah. You know, so it's like, of course, that's oh where God. all of the that's probably where all of the most ocean-based injuries take place. It's like saying ever. most because car accidents happen on the road. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> that's where all the people are. So yeah, of course. Yeah, most bank robberies take place at banks too. Mm -hmm. like, By the way, John Williams done some interesting stuff for Jaws. Huh? So a couple of things that you might have known. He uh, did the Sugarland Express before Jaws, which is Spielberg's, Spielberg's movie previous, movie previous to this one. That was his first big screen movie, Sugarland Express. No, John he Williams? did. He did Images. That was a the oh right, movie, right right right. He oh uh, no, no no I'm talking about Spielberg. Oh yeah 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 that was his first. Yeah, like green lit with the eyes of being a theatrical yeah. release. Because Duel got a theatrical release later, but it was always a made for TV right. movie. Right. Williams also did this, uh, composed the main theme for Lost in Space. Oh, nice. That would probably be the biggest thing that he did. And Valley of the Dolls. Right. And then Jaw Jaws hits in 75, Star Wars hits in 77, Raiders hits 81. What a legend. I mean, um, genuine question is there a theme song that's more iconic? I mean, maybe the Star Wars theme. Is there any well, like theme that's more iconic than the dun it dun it? I don't. Th I, I. No. If I I'm gonna say hum, no, if you hum, yeah. hum two notes to anything, exactly. Like well, because dun, dun, no one will know that that's Star Wars. Yeah. But if you go dun it, yeah. like yeah. And between between jo uh, I'm sorry, between Star Wars Raiders and uh, Superman, it, it'll take me a second to to make sure I'm humming the right one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, because like, and they're all incredible, and, and not that they're all like super similar or anything, but they're they're all they all kind of live in the same family. But if you go dun. dun Everybody's like, Jaws. It doesn't matter if you've never seen a movie in your yep. life. You know that's Jaws, you know that's and you know that song. But yeah, his, his work on this whole, and I think you mentioned it already, his work in the whole movie, aside from that, du -du 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 -du, it's a great um, score. It's an incredible score. It's, it's this swashbuckling stuff in the middle. It's this really creepy kind of ethereal stuff, like you were saying. Like, and, and it's so much more than just the... Du -du -du -du. It also reminds me of an Eddie Van Halen story. Oh, go on. As simple as... Du -du 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 is, you know... Uh, is somebody somebody was giving him a hard time about eruption? I think it was what it was. And they were like, anybody can play it. And Van Halen goes, yeah, but can you write it? <laughs> Which is kind wait, of, that's kind of so reminds good me of, though. Yeah, it's nice. That's such a bar. I think. Oh my I, god. I, I, I might have got some details. Yeah, but can you? Which write song it? they were talking about or whatever? But but that reminds me of this. Doo -doo -doo. I mean, it's two notes, yeah. but it's the the two perfect notes. The yeah. two perfect yeah. notes. Music is crazy. It music is. Crazy. When you, do you ever think about that? Yeah. <laughs> Guys. <laughs> you ever think about how crazy music is, guys? Yeah. <laughs> Can we talk about the camera department real quick? Yeah. Uh, Bill Butler, DP, he had done, and this, this kind of has to do with what you're talking about with, with John Williams working with, with Alma, and this whole group of yeah. dudes was so incestuous isn't quite the right word, but like they were, they were, tight. They were together. together. Yeah. yeah. But <laughs> Bill Butler, apparently, like he, he shot the conversation. Uh, he would later shoot Grease, all the Rockies. Like he's, you know, he's, he's worked a ton, but. He knew Friedkin. He shot something for Friedkin. Friedkin introduced him to Coppola. Coppola introduced him to Spielberg. And then he based, from what I understand, he basically just asked Spielberg if he could shoot. He called him up. He's like, I hear you're making a movie about a fish. And then he was just like, can I shoot it, please? <laughs> <laughs> basically how it happened. I wonder what fish he thought it was. But they went on to, he had to like invent some, some rigs. Oh, yeah. No, they shot that, that on the ocean. That's yeah. And they, his, his pitch was, and Michael Chapman, the camera operator, went on to have an incredible career as a DP also. Like he sh and he had, he, had sh he had been a DP prior to this. He shot with our guy Hal Ashby. He shot The Last Detail. Um, Hell yeah. And then he shot a bunch for Scorsese, The Taxi Driver, Raging Bull, The Fugitive, Space Jam. He shot Space Jam. Classic. So like he's, and he was the camera op on, on Jaws. Jaws. I think he signed up because Bill Butler was like, we got this tiny camera. And, we just, like, and they held it between their knees. 
instead of like putting gimbals and shit on the boat, yeah. like it was just like we're gonna use a light camera and we're just gonna like rip it. We're just gonna like white knuckle this camera <laughs> on the boat and that's how we're gonna shoot it. And so that's why there's shots where like up above Quint on the the crow's nest. I have that I written love down. Those yeah, shots. and Me it's too. like panning from hit like yeah. Richard Dreyfus playing uh, like solitaire, and then it's just like panning. Over to and him, you have him like, like silhouette that is so foreshadowing. Like oh, yeah, so this, you know, the silhouettes on on Quint for a couple of shots, like him standing in the, in the pulpit at the front. And so the so smug. Yeah. Just like so happy. He's just like yeah, yeah. And, and there's a couple of like reaction shots too, where where Brody's like complaining about doing the chum and then he looks back up and then all of a sudden he's in silhouette where the shot before he wasn't and you can't see Quint's face and it's he's he's a scary dude yeah. this is before we hear anything about the indianapolis and all of that there's also this one shot that sticks with me too and it's um when the the kid alex alex kittner i think mm -hmm. his name is when he is eaten and it has that like reaction shot on brody there's a name for it. I can't remember what it oh, is. The dolly. But it, like, the dolly zoom. Yeah, yeah, the dolly zoom. The, the background. Yes, yeah. that's that's what it is. And you can just see his like stomach drop. It's yeah. such a good shot. Bob Maddie designed Bruce the shark. Mm-hmm. Everyone's uh, least favorite. Of thing. of twenty thousand, he he made a giant giant he made, articulating he made squid, squid for twenty thousand leagues under the sea, and that. And then, and then Bruce the shark that yeah. didn't work. Bruce, which I, 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 imagine, like three I imagine everybody knows, but just so we say it out loud, was named after Spielberg's lawyer. Even if, even though the shark didn't work the way they wanted it to, when the shark did work. I love yeah. when his little head just pops out, like when you see his face for the first time near the end. Like cute little guy. I like the one where like he kind of just like swim, like he's just like swimming under a boat, just like right underneath the surface. So you get like the scale, like the scale mm -hmm. of it, and it's just like. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure we'll talk about this scene, but the part where um where uh Hooper is like, go to the front of the boat so I can get a good shot. <laughs> and Brody's like, what? I need no. something in the foreground. <laughs> foreground my ass. Yeah. Go further out. What for? Will you go to the end of the pulpit, please? What? Will you please go to the end of the pulpit. What for? I need to have something in the foreground to give it some scale. Foreground my ass. Well, let's get into some brilliant moments. Let's start with the most least obvious one, but actually has nothing to do with. Nothing to do with the production of the film, but this is the movie that made wide releases the standard practice in Hollywood. Yeah. It was like the first blockbuster, like we were saying. But it's the first blockbuster because they, they, they meant to do, to do it. it. Like yeah. it didn't accidentally, they're like, oh, hey, we should do that again. Like there was a plan in place. Yeah. So TV ads and everything. This, this went like so far over budget that they were nervous that they wouldn't make their money back. And they thought like people would just like, go see it once and get it and then like yeah. not go see it. So what they decided to do was basically just like a before the devil knows you're dead kind of strategy, which is put it in as many theaters as possible, right? Blanket TV with ads to let everybody know that this movie is coming out. And then everybody would, everybody who's kind of interested will go see it and they, it wouldn't be in theaters long enough for word of mouth to kill it. Yeah. So they mm -hmm. like released it. They did this wide release to make as much money as they can up front and knowing, no, thinking that this movie wouldn't have legs. Wide releases before Jaws were made for duds. Like when you had a film you weren't confident in, you did a wide release. They still do that. Yeah. I mean, that's, I mean, every time we run into it, we'll know if a movie's going to be good or bad or not based on like how far ahead of the review embargo the screenings are. Oh, yeah. I right? love reading like, those tea leaves. Yeah, yeah. It's so fun. Because if, if a movie is like, yeah, you can, press can come see it on Tuesday and then the... It releases the, on the, Thursday. The, yeah, you can come see it on Tuesday. The, embargoes, the embargo is, is an hour and a half after you leave the theater and it comes out uh, the next Thursday in, in 3,000 screens. That's it's like, cool. oh, this movie's trash. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but then you have like, I've, I've had movies where you have like a month to review yeah. It's like, oh yeah, they want me to they noodle feel, on this one. Yeah, yeah. This. But like, this is like the first one. Like before this, if you had a good movie, you'd put it out in like the major cities, and then like, like let word of mouth ripple out as it like, like so you saved money by not making as many prints. So then the prints just traveled and echoed out of the yeah. out of the major cities into the suburbs. Yeah, you didn't you didn't want to have to to strike a whole bunch of prints until you knew you were going to get return on them. Yeah, exactly. But this one, they were just like, nope, we're going ham yeah. right out of the gate. And then that changed the way movies are fundamentally released ever since. Yeah. Wasn't it in theaters for like a year too? I oh, thought yeah. I read that somewhere. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Well, and I mean, good movies used to do that. Because I mean, when we say it opened like super wide, super wide for 1975 was 400 something screens. Yeah. Right? Like that was, that was it. Which 400 screens is nothing now. Like now it's 
most you know like all the thousands of Ghostbusters and yeah. Godzilla and and all like everything the blockbusters get put out in twenty five hundred minimum. Yeah, like that's um a thousand screens is like a limited release at this point. So the fact that you know there there weren't making as many and then the good ones they just left on screens because Star Wars is the same deal like it was continuously in theaters for eighteen months or something like that. Like it's mm-hmm. Different time. You know, I, I think I said something along these lines in the Exorcist episode. There are so many movies where I just want to go back in time just to be in the theater at opening night. Yeah, I feel like that must have been electric. Yeah, and it's been like, and and Jaws might have been a little bit different because of the because of the TV ad blitz that mm-hmm. wasn't a, a standard practice either. Them and I mean everybody knew because the, the book was a legit phenomenon. Also, so seeing TV ads for that crazy book that I love, it's going to be a crazy movie. Uh, and it looks awesome, and like having excitement walking into the theater, and then being yeah like, winning on the I feel set. Like, I feel like our analog for that was uh, probably like um, the Mona the what was the Da Vinci oh. Code the Da Vinci oh, Code. Yeah. Or like, are you talking about Mona Lisa Smile? No, I'm talking about the Da Vinci Code, a book that was like every mom read this book, yes. and then it like mom did. It, we took her for her birthday. Yeah, to see yeah. and then yeah, yeah, yeah. and then it becomes a movie, and then everybody's like, oh man, we gotta go we see it. Go yeah. 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 Was the book scary? Uh, Jaws? Yeah. Yeah. Huh. yeah. Okay. The biggest change uh, that I, if I remember right, is the end. Like, Quint gets swallowed whole and then ends up killing the shark from the inside. <gasps> like, the shark, Wait, that's is, badass. The, sh- the shark is charging at <laughs> Brody. If I remember this right. The, the shark is charging at Brody and then it just kind of peters out <laughs> and dies. And does he like emerge from the stomach? No, no, nothing oh, like that. It's, okay. it's not like he's just in there, like causing a ruckus. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Either that or the shark chokes on him. So I don't even remember exactly what it is, but there's definitely no exploding uh, air tanks. That's involved. still badass, though. I mean, it's not as cinematic because you can yeah, see well, him and it's it's rummaging. it's less of a journey for. I mean, you can see why they made that that for the movie, made, made that change oh, yeah. for the movie because it's way less of a of a payoff for Brody. Uh, who is the main character of the movie? Like, this is the like, main character of the book. I can, I can watch this episode of What's the Difference. <laughs> it's it's an old one. It's yeah. It's it's. I, it might have been the first one that we ever did. Like, it's ten, twelve years old at this point. But anyway, brilliant anyway, moments. Scenes. Yeah. Scenes. What do we want to talk about? Opening scene. Yeah. Start there. Yeah. Party on the beach. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Bill faded skinny dipper. And even even that tracking shot at the, in the in that party. Oh yeah. Like the depth of that tracking shot and how many different individual frames are in that like yeah. it just moves from side to side and there's a wide shot and we see a big group over there and it settles on like a close up of two people making out in, in silhouette and then it keeps it just and cuts back to the, the number yeah the number and this is what I was talking about in, in like you know infant Spielberg the filmmaker basically like that's the kind of thing that he continued to he's just that's his whole thing and it like that's a cool solid trick too like this, this is the thing that I flagged about Seven Samurai too is like those all of these things that happen in the foreground and then people move and there's something else that's happening in the background and then somebody else comes into the foreground and all the three different setups all happening in one take, basically. And this, this movie's chock full of that stuff. Oh my God. Even like li- a little bit later in the home when he's like, uh, Brody's on the phone and, his, mm-hmm. and the wife and kid are doing stuff in the background. There's so much of that in this movie. Yeah. Oh, yeah. One of my favorite shots of it actually is the, um, a, a little ways in, 10, 10, 12 minutes into the movie, there's a conversation that happens on a barge and like, What's what's fat? I've always loved this shot because it's a, it's basically a static shot, but the boat is moving, mm-hmm. and so there's so much movement in the frame. Even and like, I think at at one point, uh, Brody and the mayor, you know, they walk towards camera a little bit and they reframe a little, and the camera the, the camera pans and tilts just just subtly. But there's so much movement in this frame because he's parked the camera on the edge of a barge that's mm-hmm. sailing across the harbor, and so even static shots in this movie are Great. like vibrant. And moving, and there's so much going on. You think the mayor, how many how many uh, anchor blazers do you think? The I was gonna has? say the most thing I think about him, about him is how well dressed he is. I think he can get that at J Crew probably. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> little anchors. It's like, how, yeah. how, how, like, I mean, nothing screams island mayor. Yeah. Like an anchor blazer. He's leaning in, yeah. baby. He's like, he, I know he what. He knows what he's doing. Yeah. He knows who he is. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, back to the opening scene. Um, it opens like so idyllic and so innocent, mm-hmm. which is what I think this movie does so well. Yeah. Like the fact that a child dies later. Like our two victims are a teenage girl having a good time, flirting with a boy, yep. and a boy who just wants ten more minutes out in his yep. raft. Like that's how you know the stakes yep. are high. It's like children. Well, and that's it's such a shorthand's not quite the right way to put it. Uh, cheat code isn't either. But like making those two the vic- like immediately, you're like we got to get this shark. Mm-hmm. Like if it were just. 
if it were the two dudes trying to catch it, like the two dudes trying to catch the shark with his wife's holiday roast. Oh yeah, that's a, like oh, that's, yeah. that's a great, that's a great they, psych out by the way. Yeah, and the fact that they survived that is like because like they they're cannon fodder. Honestly, like if they get eaten in that moment, I don't really care. I don't care. Much. I don't care. But like a kid and this and this girl that we haven't met at all, she's just a kid at a at a beach party that's just trying to have a good time. Um, and then a little kid. But they really play and a dog and the dog. And but dog. they really play up the kid, right? Like it's just like. The shark eats the like the shark eats the teenage girl, and then it's just like, well, maybe I'll close down the beaches, but then he, you know, the mayor overrules yep. him, and then like the next thing you hear is like, well, who's in the water? And it's just like, well, like the the Cub Scouts are swimming for their yeah. merit badge, and then like literally the next three minutes is just like children in the water and like, uh, um, claustrophobic POV shots from like, uh. Brody's perspective, like trying to watch the children in the water, and it just builds so much tension, like so slowly and so perfectly. Yeah. So that that uh, I think you're talking about the when everybody's on the beach right before Kentner gets yeah. gets eaten. Yeah, build up to Kentner, to Alex Kentner getting eaten is is so rem- it, it's it's long. Mm-hmm. Like you linger in this just quiet nervous cutting I mean, back and forth this, and like the even the cuts are awkward there's that little sequence where people are walking in front of the camera and it and it bounces yeah. in in between those shots this scene and has like those those, those shots just kind of kind of make you nervous like they don't feel right they don't really feel natural like your your eyes don't do that and so like you're you're uncomfortable watching it it doesn't feel right um and there's there's it, everything's so busy. There's a guy over there looking for his dog. There's the kid that wants ten more minutes. There's you know the, a, a whole bunch of other kids wanting to jump in, and, and there's a guy trying to be like, I need you to put a, a red curb in front of my business, and like all of this stuff is just going on and on and on, and you're just worried about people in the water, and like it's such it's such a quietly tense bit of, of and it's just it's just quiet and it's it's idyllic and it's bright and it's sunny and there's you know. Wonderful primary colors everywhere you look in the frame, well, but it's terrifying. That, and and I don't think we have enough. I remember thinking about this a lot when Midsummer came out. I don't think we have enough horror in broad daylight. Yeah. It is so much scarier just to think of what could happen when it's not and dark and like. It also provides yeah because there's it's not something hiding in the dark. It's hiding yeah, in plain sight. Yeah. And like to that point, right? Like this scene in particular features these the film's best cinematography that or most iconic cinematography that doesn't involve the shark. Right. Right? Like the the dolly zoom, obvious, right? And then the diopter shot of like when the guy is like talking to him and it's just like he's just watching the children in the ocean over, over his shot shoulder. shoulder. Yeah. yeah. Like those are two of the most famous shots that don't have the shark. Yeah. And they all are expertly used in this to like just build tension. Yeah. The other thing I love too is the characterization of Alex Kittner's mom. Uh, because first of all, the trick that it plays with him saying just 10 more minutes, when you think too much about that, you think about how much she's replaying that for the rest of her life, the 10 more minutes. Then you have her screaming, Alex, Alex, at the end. And then later, another one of my favorite mo- moments in the movie is when she slaps Brody. Yeah. Oh, don't forget about when the, when the like, torn up, uh, oh. uh, uh the torn Which, up, the torn up, um, It's like, we float. knew he was dead. Yeah. We knew but the just rap, like, the rap, yeah. yeah. Well, that's the other the the other fascinating thing about this this scene too is like the dog, the dog disappearing mm-hmm. that happens before Alex. It, like that's yeah. how we know the shark is out there, right? Yeah. Is this guy's been playing with the dog and the dog is swimming in and out, and all of a sudden the guy can't find the dog, and then you see the dog stick just kind of floating there, right. and then we're underwater from the shark POV, which by the way, the the shark POV stuff, brilliant, yeah, like, so good. Shark doesn't work great. Get a camera in the water. Yeah. Just swim up underneath this yep. this person, you know. Which, by the way, is um, one, of, one of the lingering scares of this movie. Because who among us hasn't been in water with your little legs dangling and thinking, oh, yeah. like, "Ooh, who's gonna bite me?" Like, well, my entire life, have, yeah. since I've seen this movie, yeah. Oh, your legs, legs, your legs dangle when you. I have a hard water? time. I have a hard yeah. time swimming yeah. in lakes because of that. <laughs> where I'm just like, "There's no sharks yeah. here," but I don't know what's in there. Yeah. Um, well, it's jellyfish for me, but yeah. But the the fact that the dog disappears, we don't see the dog get eaten. But we do see Kentner. We couldn't handle the dog. No, I, I couldn't. That's handle well. The that's dog. the kind of that's the funny that thing, right? Is like, um, you know, we need a little bit of a a little bit of a tease, I guess, and then the real the real horror is Kentner getting eaten. But like, it's not until the dog disappears that we're like, okay, confirming the shark is in the water right now, and then like all of these things that we've been worried about 
during this quiet three minutes leading up to this, like, it's true. Shark's out there. He just hit a dog. And then we go underwater. Then John Williams kicks in. And then the shark comes up from underneath. And we see this. It's, it's gnarly. Because we see it, like, low angle looking over the water past people playing. And there's a kid in the background getting eaten by a goddamn shark. And you Dude, can it's just the geyser like of blood. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's awful. Uh, and we see him struggling underwater a little bit for one shot too. Like it's it's a gnarly gnarly scene. He's a little kid. It's scary. Um, but yeah, no. The the idea that the 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 camera tricks in this in this sequence that don't have anything to do with the shark malfunctioning are yeah. some of the best in the movie. Even just that bloody raft. Oh, it's devastating. Like again, I just always think of Mrs. Kittner. I just always think of her and how devastated she must be. Yeah. But like also in. I almost forgot about the dog. Yeah, speaking of innocent victims, our victims are innocent girl, innocent boy. Innocent and a dog. dog. What's next? Which we, we've talked about Quint's introduction. I do, one of the things that I love about that scene, so that everybody's in the, city, the council chambers or, or whatever it is, and everybody's, it's, everybody's talking over everybody else. And, you know, even Brody is like, nervous about it he's like he, he kind of doesn't want to answer the question he's like yeah we, we gotta we, we're gonna close the beaches down and then he gets sort of over for 24 hours he's like, i didn't agree to that um but then everybody having to as soon as the the nails happen everybody shuts down but then as soon as quinn starts talking like everybody really shuts down like the the command that he has over that room oh. in that scene is is incredible. Not like a lot everybody's of have that everybody's present. scared of him. Yeah. I know? mean, rightfully so. Like he's nuts. He just <laughs> did that really scene? painful thing that we talked yeah. about and ran his nails across the, the chalkboard. Head and the tail, the whole damn thing. Like yeah. uh, his ten grand. <laughs> yeah, the way the way that he like the cold bucket of water that he yeah. is being thrown on this room full of people that are like, you can't close the thing. But you, but you know what? Like, not only is that scene great, but then it doubles down on it, right? Because, and we're talking about, like, the pacing and the edit of this film, right? And how great it is and, like, how emotional, like, emotional scenes ebb and flow. Well, like, this is the serious introduction of Quint, right? The next scene is literally what I'm calling, like, the dad armada. Mm-hmm. Like, go, like, so he's just, like, a professional, right? Like, you know, I'm an oil man. <laughs> you, 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 like, you know, it's just like, I'll hunk this shark for you. It's going to cost you 10 grand. Yep. And then, then it cuts to the, and then like the town is like, uh, 10 grand, that's kind of a lot. I don't know if we should hire this guy. And then it just like cuts to the next scene, which is a bunch of bozo dads with a six pack, like yeah. just like getting out on the water to just be like, we're going to get this shark. Yeah. A and, guy trying to smuggle dynamite it, onto it, a boat. Yeah. So yeah. Can... He makes some good points though. I mean, 10 grand rather than shutting down your beaches for 4th mm-hmm. of July. You gotta, your yeah. 10 grand is a new co- Corvette though. Like, I know, that's yeah, a lot of money yeah. in 75. Like, don't yeah. get me wrong. Um, but no, the other thing that struck me about the, the, not town hall, but the meeting scene is how realistic that is. And I think if you doubt that, like think back about like the beginning of COVID and how hesitant people were to shut down yeah. events. Yeah. Well, I, I remember there was a whole lot of don't be the mayor from Jaws. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> warnings going around yeah. about, about COVID. But the, uh, yeah, I mean, the, the idea, and this is where the community idea of this movie comes back into play, right? Like, here's a community of people that are just concerned about their own survival. And we can't shut the beaches down because we need, we need Fourth of July weekend or we're going to be on welfare all winter or whatever it is that Quinn says. And, like, he's, he gets, they all understand the stakes of this. And the community is just like, no, don't do it. Don't shut it. Don't do anything. We'll just, we'll just suffer through. And Quint understands it just as well. And that's where, and he's, he's kind of extorting them. And he's like, hey, uh, 10 grand. Yeah. I don't bring back the tourists. I don't put all your businesses on a paying basis. But it's not going to be pleasant. I value my neck a lot more than 3,000 bucks, chief. I, you know, I want to talk about the slap. Yeah. yeah, I love this. So we're, one of the things that I noticed about the movie when I saw it on the big screen the first time is that there are arrows in the shark. The shark that they yeah. catch, there are arrows sticking out of the shark, and I never noticed that when I was watching it on the, TV the, the or on a laptop the, the, or whatever. But the, 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 like the fact that the dad armada, somebody had a bow and arrow. Yeah, just like, <laughs> like the dad armada. Yeah, by the way. like we never saw it going out, but like coming in with the shark hanging and hanging upside down, there are arrows sticking out of the shark, and I'd never seen that before. And I remember seeing it in the theater, just like just laughing because the idea of some, you know. Some Thank islander you, yeah. from the northeast with a bow and arrow, yeah, like shooting at a shark. <laughs> like that's basically a dinosaur, my yeah, guy. Like that is not that is not your normal. It fish. helps, I guess. Yeah, doesn't hurt. Uh, no, but like the whole scene with 
him hanging from the from the stand. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's like, it, obviously, we know that's not the shark. Yep. Obviously. But, like, you get lulled into this false sense of security. Or at least they do but, enough to make it believable that they wouldn't care. Even them. that's narratively efficient. Just the way that they use the edit to convey to the audience that it's definitely not the shark. Because yeah. them, like hoisting up the shark and stuff like that is parallel edited with uh, Dreyfus like doing yeah. the medical examiner. Cooper's looking at the, the girls. At the girl and I he's mean, just like, he's just like they come, By the way, they measuring come in like a, a bucket about yeah. this size. Like, and he's just like measuring how big like the jaw is and it's like he's like literally doing this and then it just like cuts to the jaw of the caught shark and it's clearly not as big and it's just, mm -hmm. it's just so tightly done. Yeah. So it's just like we know that that's not the real shark. They're, but you, they have like their, ex, like they're they're exalted, they're feeling good, and then the m mom just comes and just like dumps a shitload of cold water on it. It's great. Well, and even the the from Brody's perspective in that scene, that's what the, I think about yeah. the enormous relief and like how happy he is. Like he's running around shaking hands, posing for pictures, and just smiling. Oh, I mean, he's talking fast, and he's like, "Who, who caught this? Was it Ben? Ben Gardner catches? Oh my god, he's so excited!" And like. The sheer relief in his whole energy is, mm. is just, it's at, at a high, and then, what, 40 seconds later, oh, yeah. Hintner's mom shows up, and he gets slapped, and it's... And by the way, she shows up in all black, oh, with, man. The, with the veil over her head, she is in full and, mourning. And the way, and the, way um, the mayor lets him take Can't. it. Oh yeah. my, what a douche. Wait, yeah. Oh my god. So... That's, so, that's, a, quali that's a quality politician there. Yeah. yeah. That's a, that's um, a career He's politician. sharp dressed, but he's yeah. a... He's a career, that's a career politician move right there. I'm sorry, Martin. She's wrong. No, she's not. I mean, Mayor Vaughn, though, one of the best movie villains. Oh, yeah. Oh, he's out he's, there. He needs, yeah, yeah. He's, he's on that, that villains that aren't really villains, yeah. antagonists oh, list. You know maybe. what? <laughs> he's, he's up there, he's up there with, uh, what's her name from Princess Mononoke. Yeah. 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 You know what really ticks me off? Is when he's like, my kids were in there too. Yeah. It's like, bro, you were telling people to swim in the water. I mean, like, and nobody, they didn't need to swim. Well, he's, uh, yeah. I mean, they're already on the beach. So, they're like, they're on the beach. They're, they're buying stuff. Th yeah, I was just gonna say, like, they're already on the beach. You know, they are, he's already got them for a lunch and probably a dinner. Him, like, him why do you need to sh shove yeah. them in their water? Him strong arming his buddy into getting yeah. in the water is just like, you. Also, <laughs> that's the wrong guy. He's like an older gentleman. Yeah. And no, he was, in, he was probably like 42. Yeah, in 75, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, like, an older gentleman and, and some chill, what I assume maybe are his grandkids, and, like, why not, I don't know, pick someone a little more young and agile to be know. the guinea pig in the water. Well, it's everybody no got in. It's like, you everybody know, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. There was not one person on that beach, oh, oh that guy's in there. Yeah. That really ticked me off. There's another scene that comes on the heels of that one that, that it's one that I really like, and it's one that I think it sets apart Spielberg's work. Is like the scene with Brody and his son at the dinner table. Yeah, no, that's completely improv too, right? The the yeah. each Where other they're, they're stuff, mimic, miming yeah. each other. Yeah, it's uh, it's such a sweet and I mean, if it was you know organic on the day, I yeah. totally believe that because it's such a sweet little moment. And then and a great Ellen leaning up against the door frame in the background, watching it and being upset about you know, it's it's such a quiet but perfectly played moment of humanity. And it, and it brilliantly contrasts because, like, that's, like, the follow-up to him getting f***ing slapped in the face, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So it's, like, he gets slapped in the face. Like, this mother, this grieving mother slaps him in the face, and he's, like, upset about it yeah. sitting at dinner and just, like, and then give having, a, ha having, a nice mo having a nice moment with his yeah. kid. It's, it's that ebb and flow that I think a, makes it. It's well, such you know, a beautiful little scene. Like, feeling guilty about the fact that he's even able to sit at the dinner table with sure. his son yeah. while she's not able to, and he thinks that's partially his fault. Uh, but this is actually where Brody, like, I, I don't love Brody as a protagonist, but this moment where he says, uh, give me a kiss because I need it. Because I need it. That broke. Well, he's such a, like, he's not, he, he's, not that he's flawed, but he's, he's, he's regular. Yeah, he's like, there's dude. nothing, there's nothing extraordinary about him. Like, he's a guy that used to live in the city and wanted to make a difference. And so he moved to a small town, took a job at, on the island, and then now he's being forced to, to, hunt a shark. to like hunt a shark to face it to like do everything that he's terrified of and you know and his 
his he's a character too that like we meet him saying like stay off of the swing i haven't had a chance to fix it yet and then right before he goes out on the boat he's like don't use the the uh, fireplace in the den i haven't been able to fix the flu he just he just wants to take care of his people and yeah. that's he's just it like a piece of yeah he's just a, a job, regular guy yeah. with a job and like and so I don't know, there's something that's just extra relatable about uh, about Chief Brody that is, um, and it seems like this where he's at the dinner table where he's like, don't he's not like super cop here, <laughs> like he's not, you know, he he is not Jason Statham on a jet ski gonna punch a shark in the face, like that's not who he is. Well, see, you but, know, like, the, the genre the had to mature to that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we had to grow to that. Yeah. Um, but the fact that he is, you know, his his heroism is one of just just doing the right thing and, mm-hmm. and knowing that it's up to him to do it you know i mean even the whole character moment of him like moving out of the city because he didn't feel like he could make a difference uh, there the crime right in the city of- yeah. Oh, yeah 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 give us a kiss why because i need it i also love the rest of this scene though because that's when uh hooper comes mm-hmm. in and he's got like two bottles of wine one red one white which is so considerate yeah uh, i I actually love Hooper. I, Hooper might Hooper's be my great. favorite. Yeah. I, I mean, he's just a passionate little nerd mm-hmm. who has a bunch of money and is obsessed with sharks. And he's excited about it. He's things, excited about he's, it. He's smart and yeah. Yeah. The part that made me laugh, I think, more than any moment in this movie, though, is when uh, Brody just pours himself a full water glass of wine. Yeah, he pours it on top of, I think it's, it's ice. There's or, ice in yeah, it. Yeah, because like I noticed some, he's that. He's been drinking and he pours it on top of whatever, <laughs> like, the last little bit is. Like his gotcha, cocktail, so. yeah. <laughs> This man Ew. is stressed. <laughs> he, yeah. he is putting one on tonight. Yeah. He does. He is not tasting anything in that yeah, glass. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but let's get into the uh, let's get into the shark. So, like, that's the other interesting. Like Brody got in, or like Quinn got into the shark. Wow, yeah. too soon. <laughs> too soon. It's just been it's just been fifty years. <laughs> no, so the the movie is split right down the middle, right? Like it's an hour and eight <laughs> minutes or something like that when they get on the boat, and it's a two hour and six minute movie. Like it's. Uh, the movie is split directly in half, and then once they get on the boat, like this is where the real, the real fascinating brilliance or accidental brilliance of we can't see the shark starts coming into play. Like the barrels. What's funny about this too is like it was it was out of necessity because the shark wasn't working, but then cut to just a couple of years ago, and we get what is it? How do, what do you call Nope Sky Jaws? Yeah, Nope is definitely Sky Jaws. <laughs> yeah, it's, <laughs> It's and like here That's we are, good. you know, yeah. doing doing that exact thing on purpose. Cause, yeah, yeah, because so like the barrel, the barrels are the inflatable tube guys oh. in in Nope, right? Like it's using. This is not the Nope episode, but that has like the scariest movie scene. That are we gonna do a Nope about. episode? Oh, I love Nope. Is it high enough? I, I, I don't think it's remember. on my list. Uh, I don't think it's on my list. But that scene episode. where they're in. We're, this uh, is gonna have to be our backdoor Nope episode. Yeah. Yeah. But like the. The climax of Nope op- operates in all of the same ways yeah. that this does. Because it's the shadows going over. You know, it's just. That's a good point. It's like it's the second. Hinting at something without yeah. seeing it. Exactly. Yeah. And, and that being what's, what's scary yeah. about it. The fact that we, you know, and, and seeing, seeing these guys go like, there's no way you can stay down with three barrels. There's no way. And then it goes down with three barrels. And I'm like, oh, I've just found out about this barrels and a shark situation. And I'm, this is incredible. Are you kidding me? The barrels are so genius too, because yeah. how else do you portray the weight of a shark in a movie if you're the not dock. showing the? I mean, yeah, they, the they, dock's yeah. a good one too. They, they did it earlier with the dock, yeah. and then it was just, but that was like the psych out. And yeah, that was the dock, great. like yeah. turning yep. in the yeah. water yeah. and yeah. coming back is, <laughs> like, is so like amazing. I don't know, like it looks like the shark is doing a U turn, and like I don't know that it's, it's doing a K turn. Just <laughs> yeah, exactly, it's a three point turn to come back and eat these guys. But yeah, the, no, the barrels are, are, and even just like getting a barrel in, like we got to build some tension because Hooper wants to put the tracker on and all this stuff. Like this, the way that this is built is, is it's a shark. It's efficient and it's simple and, and it, it just absolutely works. And it's also just like, you know, aping old man in the sea. Yeah. Right. You know, where he's just like going after the fish. It's just like, I just need to keep, I just need to keep on pulling them to the surface. Like it's literally the exact like man versus nature plot line. <laughs> Let's get into some of these questions we were talking about earlier. Unless there's something other specific that you that you really want to bring up. I mean, as it, as far as good scenes, I just like the shark great. attacks. Yeah, yeah. yeah I just like right. when the shark is actually attacking at the yeah. very end. I also oh. like the choice to have the climax at the very end. Like basically, there's shark explodes. Mm-hmm. Uh, Quint dies, 
and then they swim back to shore. And I think that all happens within like what, like last ten minutes. I also, it, yeah, I mean, it's and this is also back in the days where there there weren't a lot of end credits. No, mm-hmm. so like even watching it, you know, watching it streaming or whatever, you know, you see that there's there's just like two minutes in this movie left, and then the shark explodes, and then Richard Dreyfus pops up, and then they swim back, and the credits roll, and we're done. And it was oh yeah, great. But like, it goes all the way up to the end of that, that progress bar. But even, like, the fight, like, even the hunt itself, it's, like, punctuated by other moments, right? So it's, like, they get, like, the first barrel in, and then the sun goes down, and then that's when they get drunk, and they have, like, the real camaraderie moment mm-hmm. of, like, comparing scars, and you get the USA. And it's not really until that moment, either. Like, no, like yeah. Hooper and Quint are still button heads just yeah. before that. Well, they needed something to, to kind of, because it's, it's the, you know, that working class hero crap. That that uh, Hooper complains about, you know, and then they find something that they can connect on, which is like, no, I'm, I'm dinged up, same as you are. Like, and you you brought up the uh, like the appendix scar that also made me laugh. So fun, <laughs> so good. But then like after- seeing him decide to not like, talk about it, I'm not going to bring up my appendix scar. And like, like is- also just like let's not forget about like the fun moments of like how simple like Hollywood trickery was, right? Like so like like the net like they they do that they have their camaraderie moment that night right where they compare scars and now like hooper and quint are like buddies so like the next morning they wait like the next morning comes and like quint is like all right we'll try your science ways and like that's when they get into the shark cage Mm -hmm. right and he goes in the shark cage and what what the best part about that is is that they just like hired some people to go shoot in australia and it's just a dwarf like little person in a shark cage around actual great whites. And that's how they get the illusion of the shark. The shark being, they made big. a smaller cage with a yeah, smaller person. They use a cage. small person in the cage. With a regular size With shark. a regular size shark. Keep it simple, that's stupid. Great. Yeah. yeah. That's great. I mean, that's the kind of thing that, like, it would just be a giant computer shark. I mean, obviously, because the Meg. Basically. Yeah. So it's like. No, that's a real shark. That's a real shark? Oh, oh yeah. Real... I know. Yeah. They, they, they got even smaller people. To yeah. Do. It's all rear projection, force perspective. It's all force. It's all force perspective. Really yeah. short, Jason Statham is actually that small. <laughs> He's five foot. He's a very small person. <laughs> I do want to talk about the shark though, and it not working in the sense of. And I asked it earlier, so we can we can kind of talk on the thread more now. But what is the shark, Bruce, not functioning correctly? One of the luckiest things that's ever happened in the history of film. Inarguably, you know? I would say so. Like I, because the key to this movie is restraint. If you don't have restraint, you don't have the drama. You don't have like the camaraderie between the guys and you don't have the tension. And the fact that that was kind of forced, like I, I think I think about the version of this movie where you see the shark three times more than we do and yeah. it's not nearly as effective. If you see the shark as much as was originally planned, does Spielberg get close encounters off the ground two years later? Like is the movie that much, is the movie not as good to the point where Spielberg doesn't take off? the way that he does. And I, I think you can't overstate how much scarier things can be in our imagination. Um, he, he, he used that lesson multiple times, right? So like yeah. he learns that lesson in Jaws. There's definitely moments of close encounters of the third yeah. kind where, you know, it, it's, it's the secondary things that like, you know, it's, if, it's if the effect using, on the, yeah. If he was using barrels yeah. in, in Jaws, he was using like orange light in in, in close encounters jurassic park right like the literal opening scene of jurassic park is like the raptors you don't see the raptors it's like the guy gets his hand pulled in and then like "Ah." so like what happens if he never learns that lesson yeah like Like what's the alternate reality where where bruce works swimmingly where bob maddie is like i did it yeah made you a shark (laughs) and like 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 the the t-rex feeding scene like what happens in the t-rex feeding scene right where it's just like the goat and it's just like and then like they're like where'd the goat go and then you just see like the goat leg like hit Hit the, like, you see a lot of that in Jurassic Park. Yeah. Like, I don't think Jurassic Park is half as good if the shark works. Exactly. Yeah. But th- it's those lessons that he learned there, and, like, the actual true power of imagination mm-hmm. allows him to do things, like, do things more subtly than convention would have thought reasonable. Mm-hmm. Well, and and you, you start to think, like, uh, you know, if, if you see the shark throughout the whole movie, is, is Jaws in theaters for a whole year? Like the, and the way that he shot Close Encounters was like he, he got to write and direct it himself. Like it's, uh, he shot it on like 65. So like he, like it was a big, big production. And like, does he get that opportunity uh, if, if Jaws if was a Jaws, success? If Jaws was fine, you know? Yeah. No. And then if he doesn't get Close Encounters, does he then 
not get Raiders? Does he then, you know? No, he, he would he, he would have got he would have got Raiders. Right. Well, I guess maybe 1941 never happens. Yeah. <laughs> maybe <laughs> that's, that, that that's definitely that's true. what we don't get yeah. because 1941 was the moment we talked about it on the Raiders episode when because he was kind of having to shoot from the hip on uh, on Raiders, Raiders because of 1941 and Close Encounters wasn't as big. It as wasn't Jaws. as big as yeah. Jaws, and so. One of my favorite horror things is when someone is like in pain and you can only see their face. Like that's one of my favorite things. And I think that is part of this idea is like, you're just imagining what they're going through. Mm, like, yeah. That is so horrific. Ah, thank God that shark didn't work. Thank God the shark didn't work. <laughs> yeah. Good job, Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> Bob, Maddie, your, your most incredible failure. Yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> it's the world's you best saved failure. Hollywood. Yeah. <laughs> but, but Diddy, I mean like this is, Listen, this made Steven Spielberg's career, but there's knock-on effects of this, right? Like, this could be argued that this is the beginning of the end for New Hollywood. So, while blockbusters are on the rise, you know, Chinatowns and, like, Five Easy Pieces and, like, all of these, like, seven, like this, the early 70s, like, cinema movies we love, they're starting to decline. Well, I, I think there's a whole genre of movies, and I... I think like Star Wars is maybe the peak of this where it's a fantastic movie. It accomplishes so many things and it also sets up some bad trends. Yep. yep. This is absolutely yep. one of those. Yeah. But this is like the precursor to Star Wars. Yeah. yeah. It may be the first. Like, yeah. Is, yeah. The idea that, that all of a sudden, instead of looking for the next Bonnie and Clyde or the yeah. next conversation, we're looking for the next Jaws like or the next Star Wars. Well, yeah, it was just like, wait a second, we can make a hundred million dollars on one of these things. You know? <laughs> on, on one? On one. And the reason yeah. it's so good is not just because it's a big, scary shark. That's like the last reason it's good. Well, and that's, that's the lesson, you know, of all the lessons that are taken away from, you know, Spielberg learned restraint. And, and Hollywood and didn't. Hollywood, <laughs> Hollywood learned the opposite, yeah, yeah. right? Hollywood, Hollywood learned that yeah. I can make a hundred million dollars off one picture, yeah. four hundred in total, Spielberg, right? I think it. Yeah, yeah. Every, everybody's taking the wrong lesson oh, away from Spielberg this, except for Spielberg. Yeah. But Hollywood didn't. I think is the takeaway. Yeah. Like, because oh. I think it made like four hundred million in its initial theatrical run, right? Only to be topped by like Star Wars that I think did four seventy. Yeah. So it's just like, wait a second, we can make one movie and make four hundred and seventy million dollars. Let's make more of those. And we're just gonna add the secret sauce of yeah. John Williams to every yeah. one. Every single one. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. All right. So Jaws, huge success. I think we can all agree on the fact that um, it's on the heels of the shark not working, right? Like, mm -hmm. so here's a filmmaker that managed to more than rise to the occasion, but like birthed themselves as like a premier talent because of the her, uh, like the obstacles they had to come in bringing this picture over budget but you know one of the best movies ever made and you watch Spielberg's old stuff right like his Columbo X episode is good <laughs> right it's not the best Columbo episode his nobody ever talks about Spielberg's Columbo, Columbo episode, episode right anymore. his his why. night gallery episodes are also good yeah, yeah. you know but I mean capably made they, they don't they don't feel any different than any of the other night yeah. gallery episodes right duel awesome but good. duel is good right I keep on thinking like we we do work you know at IGN yep. so I think a lot about this um Zelda movie and the guy that they got making it, which is West Ball, West Ball. right? I, have I have no confidence in this new Planet of the Apes movie, and I love Planet of the Apes. And I just think to myself, is Steven Spielberg before Jaws like the 1970s West Ball? <laughs> and like, well, I mean, because huh. you know, we've talked about the release strategy and you know the fact that this was the first intentional blockbuster. I mean, what kind of confidence did he instill in those in the studio to get them in, to invest like that? Oh, dude, there's like, a, What were the meetings like? That, That's what I wanted to know. So, so one of the best post-release Jaws things that exists of Steven Spielberg is they filmed him watching oh, yeah. the Oscar nominations for the year Jaws came That's out, right? And like watching him, he, it's they have him He's on camera as being hell. snubbed. We didn't really talk this got none right no nominations or we did, yeah the, hang on you continue talking about this but, but like yeah. it's yeah. on camera him getting snubbed yeah. and like in real time just be like they <laughs> never give it to if you make money they're yeah they're gonna give it to you yeah. yes I, like he's right to yeah. be mad and also welcome to showbiz baby yeah the Oscar i mean he's, he's he, like him and his buddy martin scorsese are gonna be hunting for those statues <laughs> yeah. for like the next like 15 yeah, years no i i didn't i didn't give uh i didn't i didn't go to the accolades section in the pedigree because we we jumped straight into how how just great this movie is mm -hmm. but it did win three academy awards uh oh, okay for film editing score yeah. 
Yeah. I mean, John Williams won the score and, uh, oh, and best and best sound. Cool. Deserves all three um, of those. Yeah. Williams, absolutely. Or did it win all yeah. those? Or yeah. Just, okay. It won all those. It was also nominated for best picture, uh, but one flew over the cuckoo's nest one. Okay, but but, he, didn't, but he, didn't get, he didn't get the he didn't get the director. Not. Oh, Steve. No. Yeah. No, he it, might yeah. be being, like he's, he should have gotten. It, I mean, listen, listen. He's again. Before then, he was. There is nothing about his early work to signify that this is a genius at work. Yeah. Right. That's all I'm saying. Like, literally, he was the West Ball, and I say this slightly insultingly, but what West Ball's like, I could say with absolute confidence that even fucking Dan does not have the goddamn Maze Runner <laughs> on his, like... God, I hope Dan has the Maze Runner on his... <laughs> uh, I, could say, God, I, I, I could say with absolute... Famously Maze... Famous Maze Runner Stan. <laughs> I could see that, Producer too. Dan. I, I could say with absolute fucking confidence that even Dan doesn't have the fucking Maze Runner on his top 100 <laughs> movies, but the reason why West Ball keeps on getting work is because he brings in mediocre movies on budget which is exactly what steven spielberg did before he decided to shoot a f-ing shark movie in the middle right. of the goddamn ocean yeah shark drama I yeah. uh and i mean i guess you can blame bob maddie for for no it for wasn't it being over, it wasn't maddie's fault no one told him like that it needed to work in salt water yeah. he thought it was gonna work in a like a, in a freshwater tank, tank. yeah right. not maddie's fault it was a lack of communication I, I, yeah i do i do want it, like the play-by-play of like I would, I would love to be a fly on the wall in that room where Bob Manning's like, "Wait, what? It's got to go in the. It's got to go in the where?" Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, and then he just changes his phone number. <laughs> like, yeah, that'd be that'd be great. I have, um, a, I have a thought. Are sharks the best movie monster? Hmm. Because there's something about the peacefulness of open water that is disturbed so well i you know it's for me it's it's the idea of not being able to like underwater is the same as space mm-hmm. yeah. right like oh yeah humans cannot exist underwater without a lot of help yeah. like it is a dangerous full stop dangerous and it's real easy to get lost too far from help well and you can't you know the idea of floating in the middle of the ocean with just who knows how deep underneath you and who knows what's swimming around under you can't like it's just it's just a blank mystery of what is going on down the there. abyss the abyss uh is mm-hmm. like so i think if it's not sharks like it might just be the ocean yeah that's yeah. that's the scary thing you know what one of my uh i i really enjoy it's not a great movie but i enjoy the movie open water because that's mm-hmm. the whole premise it's two yeah. people in two open people, water and that's got, the whole were, movie <laughs> <laughs> I, I do love that, like the first, like third of that movie is setting up exactly how it was that they were mistakenly yeah. <laughs> left behind. Like this one guy goes under once and he comes back up and he's like, "I just want to go one more time." And he borrows somebody else's yeah. tank, and so they're counting all the gear. There's and like so like, many right, things that later. go wrong. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I respect that. That's like I, I love that in Home Alone. Chris Columbus was like really militant about leaving the breadcrumbs to understand why they left Kevin behind. Yeah, like counting the neighbor kid as Kevin yep. and like the dad throws away the ticket because the Pepsi got on it. Like all of that stuff. Yeah. Like, cause it's like, he was nervous that people Making would go upstairs. Yeah. And, like oh. he was nervous that parents wouldn't buy that. They would leave or, like, their kid. People will be like in the comments being like, well, well why <laughs> didn't someone people do this? In, and why in the comments, in the comments in the 90s, in 1990. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, but like you do kind of have to like set up every contingency. Yeah. Like you have to, but I don't know. So sharks are cool. Sharks are cool. They're scary. Sharks. Like the way they that Quint goes, shark. yeah, it's not a quick one. Yeah. No. Well, and there's a there's a really great interview with Robert Shaw on the set of Jaws, uh, talking about how miserable he was the whole time. Um, he was drunk. <laughs> he was drunk the whole time. Yeah. But he specifically talked about that scene, and he's like, you know, in the hydraulics. He's actually he's a, he's a decently proper British guy, so like it doesn't sound at all like Quint. And it's funny seeing Quint because he's in yeah. costume, he's got the hat on and everything, and he's you know. It's, uh, he talked about that scene and getting, you know, the hydraulics and the teeth and then getting it clamped down on him and slung back and forth. And he's like, and you do it 14 or 15 times and you start to think like, well, I don't want to do this ever again. Yeah. <laughs> it looks just, unpleasant. Yeah. You know, it, it, it was awful. You know, one of my favorite things about Quint too was like right before the final battle and he hands them like their life preservers. Mm-hmm. I like that he buttons back up his collar yeah. all the way. Yeah. I also, like, well, it's, it's like he's going back to his military days. Yeah. I love that he's the one that dies. It feels right. Yeah. It feels poetic. Like you kind of. Well, I feel he, like he wouldn't be upset about it. Well, he, no. He also like. He, I think he lived his entire life having survivor's guilt after yeah. the USS Indianapolis. So for him to go by a shark is poetic. Right. 
kind of yeah. nice. It's like a happy ending in a way. I mean, it's not, but like it it's, kind of is. It's not even a little bit. <laughs> no, it is. sucks for him. But like, yeah. I don't know. Is he? He was the. You had to kill one of them. I think. I think if all three lived, it would be kind of yeah. lame. Right. Uh, and he's the one. Well, you you just you needed to have Brody alone. Yeah. At the yeah. End. That's what you needed. I think. Like for for his movie to and his arc to be complete, he needed to be alone in the water against the shark in the water. Uh, for the ending, so and you didn't want to kill. You also like, you don't want to kill everybody because, especially because Hooper is is so sharp and so charming and uh, like so. Get rid of him. Is they hid ever, him. Does he ever come back for any of the sequels? I'm not gonna lie. Hooper? I never saw. Any I was just gonna sequels. say I've never seen a Jaws sequel. No, Shider, Shider and Lorraine Gray both come oh. back for Jaws two. Okay. Um, but then by the time they get to Jaws, Jaws the three D. Was I believe the one that takes that's Louis Gossett Jr. in a like a marine park. That's okay. the one that's very deep blue sea. Okay, like it's it's sort of that setup. Oh, I forgot about um, deep blue sea. And then Jaws four: The Revenge has one of the best movie. Quotes. Yeah, well, and it's also it's also my guy Lance Guest from The Last Starfighter. Okay, uh, is in it. He plays one of Brody's kids, I think, grown up and got it. A shark, come, like the idea that it's called The Revenge. It's like. Are we talking about the original, like, Bruce's <laughs> kids are now hunting down Brody's kids? Is that what we're I mean, doing? they like, eat and make babies. That's what yeah, sharks do. Yeah, exactly. And they, they bear grudges. But yeah, the Michael Caine quote. Yeah, do you, know, do you know this quote? No, but I, I just had a thought, but what's the quote? So, like, someone's interviewing Michael Caine about, like, about his, like, career, right? And someone's like, yeah, you know, like, they were basically like, yeah, Jaws 4 sucks. And it's he's like, basically like a dig about paycheck work. Yeah. You know, like, yeah that's like, coming back. People are doing that again now. Yeah, 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 yeah but he was just, stopped. his his line is great. He's just like, yeah, so did you ever, like, like the guy was basically like, Jaws 4 kind of sucks. He's like, yeah, I wouldn't know. I never really said, I've never seen it, but you should see the house that it built my mother. <laughs> <laughs> I do I do have a friend who is, like, uh, he does a lot of TV, and every time I'm at their house, they're like, and this show paid for our kitchen, yep. and this show paid for the playground. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, no, we've gone an hour talking about this movie, and we haven't brought up the quote. You're gonna need a bigger. You're boat. gonna need a bigger. We boat. have not said that quote. Yep. Like it's it's it was a small boat too. Every time I watch the movie, I'm like, God, boat. that boat's small. Mm -hmm. They do need a bigger boat. I mean, it's a boat that's big enough for that I'm to have a table to get drunk at. It's not like, like I've uh, been in tiny houseboats that you could sit at a table. Yeah. You can't take a shark. I mean, I guess it could. Boat. You're gonna need a bigger boat. Yeah. Is is one of the also best, one of the best lines of all time. Yeah, also yeah. Yeah. easily, easily. Um, what, what did uh, what did Goldieb even do here? If all the best lines are ad libbed, Roy Roy Scheider, by the way. Schneider. No. Scheider. Scheider. Tom Scheider. Roy Scheider. Tom Schneider was the old late night host. Roy Scheider is one of the. I I don't think he counts as underrated. Oh, I think. I, but like, I don't think he ever made a bad movie. I'm trying to think of one. I think I mean, Jaws two probably. But I guess, but Jaws, Jaws two is. Uh, you should see the house gonna, that built his, gonna, exactly. him wherever. Like they were his, always, chalet in like Aspen. Gonna make Jaws yeah. two. Um, so he got one more paycheck out of yeah. out of the shark gig. But like everything he's, I'm, every time I see him in the credits, I'm like, oh, thank goodness, Roy Scheider's here. Let's talk about movie lists. Is this on character intros? Um, because I that like I almost e lot. almost every single all of them. The shark, Quint. I was yeah. thinking of Quint. Yeah, I, yeah. Quint's, Quint's a good one. I don't think it was actually. Oh. Is on a ton. We did a, we did what's the difference, which we talked about a bunch of things you didn't know. Homemade movies. Uh, it, we've done Jaws stuff for practically every every type of show we've ever had on Cinefix. Um, it was on our seven scariest movie moments. The the head Ben Gardner's head. Coming out of the boat. Oh, it's so good. Um, Bruce was uh, on both of our top ten movie monsters oh. list. It was on okay. the original one, and then when we remade it a couple years ago, uh, it stuck around. It was the the fear of the unknown. I could say it was an honorable mention in our top ten practical, practical effects. effects. Yeah. Oh, there's um, some good uh, JP actually uh, work with the body of the girl. Yeah. You guys first. Yeah. Yep. JP actually took the title on the uh, practical effects of animatronics. Animatronics. Yeah. Because, you know, um, it worked. Because <laughs> 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 it didn't work. So it's disqualified. It worked in a way. Uh, yeah, it worked just enough. Robert Shaw, the, he did character introductions. I don't, I don't think he was in there. But oh, he did okay. show up on a list, uh, top 10 supporting roles that stole the show. 
Oh, Ooh. that's a good one. Which is, yeah. I, I thought it was a good pick for that. The USS Indianapolis speech ended up on the top 10 monologues. Hell yeah. Good episode. One. Good one. It was on my personal, for the story I told earlier about Jaws, uh, Jurassic Park, and uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark, it was on my, the personal top 10 that I did that was, uh, I think I headlined it. Was hyper, it? Yeah. Hyper specific subgenres or something. Was, that's fun. Because Clint's favorite movies is not SEO friendly. It's not, um, but I, I bet more people would have clicked on it. It's, impo- it's yeah. possible. I'll, we'll, we'll re-upload it. Uh, and then Brody, uh, Sheriff Brody, was in the Top 10 Heroes list that we revisited, the second version of Interesting. That. Should we put Hooper on Top 10 Nerds? I top really nerds. like that little nerd. I yeah. like that little nerd. He'll be up there with like Sam That's soft. Ganji and That soft palm <laughs> nerd. Oh my God, he's such a Sam Ganji. Mm-hmm. Oh. Just a clever little nerd. Clever little nerd. <laughs> I like him a lot. He's my favorite, I think, of the three. The, the, that first conversation where he's just casually talking about how rich he is. Yeah. It's like, that says so much about his character. But he's like, he, he's not hiding it. Are you either. rich? Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. You're a family. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I do want to, that antagonist list I need to take a look, another look at now because Mayor the Vaughn. Ja- oh, God. He's Mayor so Vaughn is such a great, he's a great villain and it's kind of not his fault. Yeah, no, it's totally his fault. It's, yeah. I mean, he's, he's... Dude, I mean, listen, I understand wanting to make... Know, the, I, I, guess, I guess not his fault is the wrong way to put it, but you can understand that perspective. I think, here's the thing, I can understand that perspective up to a point, but, like, we literally see the fucking boat of people come to the island. Mm-hmm. We see them all, like, shuffle off. I, like, the irredeemable part of Mayor Vaughn is when he's, like, peer pressuring the guy to go yes. into the fucking room. Correct. Like, yeah, they're that's, already, that's where like, he really goes Yeah, to well, Like, that's, like, it's a, it's, you know... Beach too far. Up until that point, yeah. like he's a guy taking care of the community. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's just like he's got his eyes on Fourth of July, and we can't not be open Fourth well, of July. Where, yeah, you know, like, and I think you brought up like a Lady Aboshi from Princess Mononoke. Yeah. I feel like throughout Princess Mononoke, she is pretty justifiable. Mm-hmm. But yeah, there, there's a point where you're like, come on. Yeah, the way that he, uh, the way that he signs that requisition form in the hospital, and he, he's just mumbling, and he's he's just totally shook. Like it's like it's you know. He's realizing there's there's a way to read that scene where he's realizing just how bad a guy he is, and how he's <laughs> you know what about which, which is great. Yeah, he's like, oh god, I, oh god. Great blazers though, great jackets. Incredible blazer game. Absolutely. Shall we torf? Let's torf. We've we've been torfing throughout. I hope I have something left. <laughs> it might be a short torf. It might be a short torf. It might be hard to trick Clint. I feel like you know a lot about this movie, but let, we'll try. I don't I don't know. Know. All right, torf numero uno. Jaws the book, which you have read. Was inspired by the true story of the New Jersey shark attacks. True. Uh, f- f- I'm gonna say false. I think that because that was a line in the movie, but it's, I actually don't know. But I'm just gonna, mostly I'm gonna say false just because he said true so quickly. Uh, it is false. Ah. Damn it. Uh, the idea that the new new uh, I'm sorry Jersey Shore's most notorious shark attack inspired the story of cinema's most famous marine threat has no basis. So it is a rumor, but it's yeah. a fake one. Wow. Um, in fact, there have only been direct sources that dispute the rumor since it first made waves. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was written by... A was new, that a, did Taya write that? Yeah, oh, I read nice. it verbatim. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was written by a New Jersey resident, um, Peter Benchley. His idea for Jaws came from two things, sharks and shark attacks in Massachusetts and New York. Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. And actually, the origin of the lie is a 2001 New York Times article. Wait, that's a new lie? It's new, newer. I mean, yeah. Jaws was still decades old when that lay. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah pretty, we're about yeah. halfway, halfway on the other side of that. Yeah, yeah. They published an article regard, regarding shark attack scares, where a group of scientists incorrectly told a reporter that Jaws was inspired by the 1916 Jersey Shore shark attacks. Three days later, in the corrections column, the New York Times <laughs> noted that the New Jersey section that Benchley had informed the publication. Uh, that this was simply not true. In, and the, in smaller yeah. print in the back of the paper. Then, I, you know what? Never mind. This is a really <laughs> credible rumor. I, I kind of find that fascinating. Yeah. That like th- this rumor came from the New York Times yeah. and they had to correct it. Like that's, well, that's kind of interesting. Torf number two, true or false. Uh, Spielberg himself was not present for the shooting of the final scene in which the shark explodes as he was afraid the crew were planning to throw him in the water when the scene was done. That is true, and it has become a tradition for Steven Spielberg to not shoot the last f- shot on every one of his movies. Really? Oh, yeah. I'd never heard that. Yeah. And you seem incredibly confident, so I'm going... And, I'm you're, going and it's you. true. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. Like that, which is, I, I also just learned that from yeah. this tour. It's a, that's a tradition. He doesn't yeah. shoot his last shot. Huh. Uh, but no, he was, he was afraid because it was such a um, laborious shoot that he was legitimately scared that they were yeah. just going to throw him in the ocean. They were, gonna, they were literally going to They were going to be like, screw you, Steve, yeah. and throw him. Yeah. Never <laughs> again. I mean, it's like... A, <laughs> we got it in the it's can. Like a, it's, it's, like a little, it's like a little 27-year-old. Like, I mean, that's the other thing. He's 27. Dude, he like, was a boy. I yeah. think he might be... He may be younger than Tayo. 
<laughs> <laughs> and it's just like that little shit is just yeah. making all of our lives hell. And he was scared that his crew was going to be like, yeah. screw you, Steve. Yeah. <laughs> hiding from his, he was a child hiding from his crew. Yeah. yeah. Like, like he, would be, he would be one of the younger employees at IGN. Yeah. Yeah. And he's running no a multi-million dollar show. No <laughs> Robert Shaw was drunk the whole time. <laughs> he was depressed. This by it. kid. This kid. <laughs> uh, all right. Good one. Good one. Uh, true or false? The actress who played Chrissy Watkins, which is the uh, ill-fated skinny dinner uh-huh. at the beginning, uh, wasn't an actress. Uh, like local hire, maybe? Yeah, I'll go true. That's correct. Hey, she got one close up, and then she just like ran naked into the ocean. That doesn't. And they had to get somebody Juilliard to get done. Yeah, they they also had to get somebody that they could tie ropes to and pull back and forth in the yeah. water in a in a really uncomfortable way. Well, I've I've read about that that she she got like injured and it was it was gnarly getting because yeah. they literally just had ropes tied around her and people on either side of her like pulling her back and forth. Well, and she was a uh, here. Her name is a uh, Susan Baclini Baclini, uh, and she was a swimwear swimwear model. I wonder if go. that was like tough for her to. Well, they they're like big contort for this. Ooh, I like this one. Okay, true or false? I like the body count ones. Uh, the total death count in Jaws is six. False. Eight. Um, uh, we including the dog? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, swimmer model. The dog. Hintner. Ben Gardner. Uh, Quint. Obviously. There's two what? Sharks. Two sharks. Oh, yeah. I guess if that counts, then that's, that's up to seven. Um, I'm saying eight. You're I saying like, eight? I feel like I read that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to go true because I've already lost count. How many, how many actors appeared in Hobbit? Related. Don't forget about. <laughs> don't forget. Don't, oh, you know, here, you know who you're forgetting? The fucking guy with the jacked leg that got eaten instead of Brody's son. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that is eight if you count the two sharks and uh, the dog. Seven. Ah. Hold on. Okay. So we have Chrissy. Yeah. Yep. We got uh, a tiger. Oh, wait. No, I think this is wrong. Because you have the two sharks. Yeah. Yeah. Because it said a tiger shark. Okay. No, it's eight. It's, it's eight. eight. Okay. Yeah. Because this one. Is, it he, is he live? Live reaction? No, I'm doing it in my head. So we have Chrissy. We Chrissy? have the dog. The we dog. have the tiger shark. Kidner. We have Ben. Uh, estuary victim. That's the pond. That's yes. The pond, yeah. 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 And Quint, and then the, the, the big shark, the big yeah. boy. Yeah. That's seven. Hang on. Wait, wait am I counting wrong? Because it says seven, but You also forgot Kittner. Six. Hang on. In, in order. Yeah. Chronological oh, and Kittner. Order. Wait, yeah. Chronological order. K- uh, Chrissy. Yeah. Chrissy. The dog. Yeah. Dog. Kittner. Yeah. Uh, the other shark. Yeah. Tiger shark. Yeah. Then the, the guy in the pond. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Then Quint. Yeah. Then. Did you count Ben Gardner? Ben Gardner. Then Quint. And then the Joss. big boy. The big boy. That's eight. That's eight. That's eight. Yeah. That's what I said. There you go. Nailed it. We did it. That's tour. Took us two. <laughs> and we torfed. And we learned how to go. Who's your MVP? Williams. Which, by the way, John this Williams? is my first double MVP because I think I, I'm almost positive I listed John Williams as the MVP for Raiders of the Lost Ark. Mm. Uh, so this is my second John Williams MVP. You just, any, anytime John Williams shows up? Well, he wasn't my MVP for Star Wars. But I oh, just, we know. We never know. We, we know. We, we, didn't, we, we didn't even mention him. Yeah. That's on us. Um, but no, I just I I think I I think about this movie uh, without John Williams' score, and it just doesn't hit. Uh, yeah. Maybe also the uh, MVP is the guy who couldn't get Bruce to work. <laughs> yeah, Bob Maddie. Yeah. MVP for the, the most important failure in, in the history of cinema. Mm-hmm. Um, I I I might agree with you. I think I think John because like I, I as as incredible as this movie is and as iconic as things like you're going to need a bigger boat are like the most iconic thing out of the whole movie is didn't, didn't. Didn't, didn't. and that warrants being I, the MVP of it. Who knows, baby? This 27 year old little shit brought in this movie I feel, dramatically I mean, over budget. Spielberg, <laughs> <laughs> Spielberg, I think is sort of like the, the, the like default. He, it was like when Albert Pujols won the MVP every year. Yeah. It was just like, unless somebody else really shows up to earn it, yeah. like it's, he's going to get it. So like, I, you know, I, it's ultimately, yeah, it's Spielberg, yeah. right? Like it's, it's gotta be Spielberg. But I do think that, you know, I don't know how, depending on how you come down on the auteur theory of everything, like I, I that, that score. It's like, yeah, but Spielberg hired him. Like, mm. No, I won't even. I won't. I won't. E- I won't even use. I won't even use that, right? But like, let me ask you this question: Would that score have been as effective if it was being played while you saw the shark? 
Probably not. I don't think any. I don't but think there, there I mean, was music playing, but not the first. It. But not the first time, but right? It, like it, I'm saying, so though, you're talking not... about uh, you're going back to the if we if we could see the shark. Yeah. So Spielberg gets your vote so, because of how creatively he worked yeah. around that. So like, if you saw the shark in the opening scene, is the dude going to? Is it going to land as much? I, 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 I yeah, know. I just think it's a great score. I think it does. I don't know. I think it's a great score. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to disagree. I'm not going to sit here and tell you this is a bad score. We literally, talk, we literally talked. We, 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 we literally talked about how this is the only song I think on like planet Earth that you could just hum two notes to, and literally yep. everybody's going to know what it is. Yep. That 27 year old little shit managed to take. Who's scared of his, his own crew yeah. rebelling and throwing it so in the precious. ocean? Throwing in the ocean. <laughs> Like he flies back to like, LA. Blow up the like, shark! I'm out of here. Yeah, I, I got <laughs> you know the drill. Uh, that and makes me want to throw him in the ocean more. I know. You know ironically, um, listen. I ultimately it's Spielberg, but I like I do think that the most just the fact that that is like that is a high high watermark of anybody's career. Getting making something that is so universally recognizable as I mean we talked about it with Ben Burt on Star. Yeah. Oh yeah, Sound of the Lightsaber. Like everybody knows, Tie Fighter, Tie Fighter, Millennium Falcon, literally, everybody can Wookie. Yes, R two D two. Yeah, everybody can recognize that stuff just like that. Right? So and did that, that's so the kind of thing. That so did Ben Burt. So did Ben Burt win Star Wars? He might have for me, honestly. Yeah. I, I, I don't remember it <laughs> if it wasn't John Williams. But that's that's true. I mean, as as iconic as like you're gonna need a bigger boat and everything else. Like, there's nothing more memorable, and maybe the history of film than it's uh, up there. That. It's right. certainly up there. I don't think we're going to come to any sort of consensus about this. So I you, mean, you got Spielberg. Spielberg you number got two. Sure. See, I see. I think. I think John. Will, yeah, yeah. yeah. And they're interchangeable, frankly. I feel like the the director is, is always going to be a default. For yeah. sure. Like MVP. Well, not necessarily. Sometimes, like an actor think, really think, carries. Yeah, but I mean, I, I think you start there. Yeah. And mm -hmm. if if there's something else about the movie that jumps jumps the line a little bit, yeah. like. Yeah, you could always play the he hired them game. I'm not yeah. trying to play that card. I am yeah. just right, trying to right. say that there's a lot there's a lot functioning on the there's a lot of high functioning elements of this film that are more than just the score. Yeah. Sure. No, it's I mean it's a good movie. Every like it could be I, I kinda wanna give it to Murray Hamilton too. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. his may the mayor Vaughn being so slimy oh, and so such good. an interesting antagonist for the first half of this movie. I don't I don't know that the movie works quite as well with a with a lesser performance in that role. Oh, that's gonna that's a good segue to another segment. Yeah. Shall we go straight to that segment? Yes, no? because that's Oh, are we talking about That's my cage pick. So I I think depending on what era of cage you want, he could literally play everybody in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> Which is right? why you came up with this category. Like like yeah. seriously. Segment to begin. Like like seriously, like early eighties Nicholas Cage is Hopper, right? Hooper. Yeah. Hooper. 90s Nick Cage is Scheider, mm -hmm. and then like modern Nick Cage is Quint. I wholeheartedly disagree. I don't, I, I am not about to swap out any of those three guys. I'm just really not. Like the way that those three work together is so fantastic. No notes, and I will not include Nicolas Cage in, 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 the, in, the, in the core three. I, I, I'm just sitting here thinking like Murray Hamilton might be my might be a sneak, a dark horse pick for MVP. Like he'll get he's on the ballot. Mm. He'll get votes for it. But that is the place where you have to put Nick Cage. That's what I'm and saying. I don't even. And so this might be the movie where I'm just like, no, thanks. I'm good. I feel like I've had a few of those. And so, I, I, I would like to see him in the. I'm always, yeah, yeah. I'm always game for, well, for me, Nick Cage. Well, well, let me let me let me throw this one out there for you. All right. Careful. What, just be careful with my jaws. What happens if we took jaws <laughs> and we gave it to Warner Herzog? Uh -huh. And then, like, we took, like, Port of Call New Orleans, Nick Cage, tossed him into the Shider role. Jaws 5, Port of Call New oh, Orleans, <laughs> where he swims up into the yeah. Port of Call. And he's just, Curse. like, he's just, like, dealing with, he's just dealing with his coke habit. Yeah. He's got a mayor up his ass about mm -hmm. trying to keep the beaches open, and he's got the That, 100%. Yeah. Into. I'm just saying, I would watch that film. It's yeah. a movie. Yeah. No, I would love to watch that film. might be film. the most movie I don't want to. I don't want to watch Jaws with Nicolas Cage see. anywhere near it. I just I want I just want I just want Cage Herzog. What's you know, you know what's funny about about doing this whole show and talking about all these movies that I legitimately care about and love, and then I'm really sort of finding the ones that I'm willing to to like screw with, right? <laughs> like there. But are, this is and, not one of them. Jaws is one that I'm I'm precious about. So like, I this is it's uh, this is the only time I've had difficulty really with like where's Nicolas Cage going? I'm like I don't want him anywhere near it. No. 
maybe he's the, if he's the dude that follows around Quint, like that little the guy with the basset hound that <laughs> following. Like sure, yeah, Ben Gardner. Yeah, he could be Ben Gardner's yeah, hand. Yeah. yeah, that would be incredible. If just some you know, like if we could get just cut in Nicolas Cage's head floating out of the boat <laughs> and sort of sneak that into a copy of Jaws somehow. That'd, actually, that'd be good. I don't hate the mayor. I don't hate I, like I, I. I do also like Murray Hamilton. He would be good as he the would mayor. be good. He would. Yeah. He would do well in that role. But yeah. I just. I think Murray Hamilton is. is he's so, great. He's so slimy. Yeah. He's yeah. Great. I don't think Nick Cage looks half as good in an anchor blazer. Oh, that I think he could or a rock pink it. seersucker shirt with oh, such good. I'm, I'm gonna start dressing like the mayor from. You from should. Golf. That's it's a I fun look. It it's a fun look. Uh, I do have a three piece seersucker suit. Do you actually? <laughs> <laughs> Why didn't you wow. wear it? How? <laughs> Come on. For uh, what? For what reason? Yeah. Well, how did that happen? Why? Because listen, I, I had uh, my wife was working at J Crew at the time. There was a fifty percent employee discount. And so you were like, I need to get this Sears sucker. I was no, like, well, I, there's a there's a really nice suit available for like seventy bucks. <laughs> Here I go. <laughs> like that's, I, still, I wear it every Easter. Yeah, life is um, short, right? Yeah, absolutely. It's my Easter uniform. <laughs> Let's talk about where this movie ranks. Well, this isn't my highest ranking Spielberg, but it comes in at an honorable thirty-one. That's decent. Top, upper third. Yeah, yeah, upper third. Yeah. That's great. Uh, this is embarrassing for me. Oh no, it's not. On there, and I don't feel good about it. I, I'm Sunset Boulevarding. I'm uh, Monty Pythoning. Uh, <laughs> Monty Pythoning. We yeah. were all kind of Monty. Well, I was yeah. the only one that wasn't yeah. Monty Python. Yeah, yeah. No, I don't feel good about this one. This feels bad. I, okay. I, this movie rules. I'm told Dan has it at number four. Whoa. Okay, Dan. Instead of being sad that I'm in the same neighborhood as Dan, I'm just gonna give. I am gonna just give Dan a little bit of credit for having good taste on this one, because uh, I'm right there with him. But I'm number, it's my number one. <gasps> it's wow. My, this is your number one movie of all Wait, time. So exciting. This one. is really exciting. This Numero is. uno. Wait, so we have two number ones. Because mine's T2. Yours was Terminator 2. Yeah. Yeah, and so yours two is... number ones have been revealed. But Jaws, Wait, did Jaws have, is my number one. Was Sunset Boulevard your number one? No, nope, Sunset Boulevard was my number it was, yeah, it was, it was right up there. But Sunset Boulevard is my number two, I, but it's not my number one. Is... This is Clint Gage's favorite movie of all time. Perfect. That's crazy. Which is why Nick Cage can stay though. It, that's valid. <laughs> that's don't. valid. Let's see. Cal's got it at 31. Dan's got it at number four. I've got Ooh, it. That's high. One. That's and top 10, though. Well, so here we have to ask the question here. Uh, are we going to, but before, before, we, before we show its real ranking, uh, clearly we're striking this we're movie strike from this the movie? list. Yeah. Can we all agree that we should get this movie off of it? Yeah. No one. Uh, no, I thought no one was my else favorite movie. Yeah. Else. I mean, like, um, the fact that this is going to outrank the Meg. Which, by the way, no one's mentioned no the prime. shark. Yes. Right. Oh, yeah. Yes. By the way, I know our, our 3D printer. I'm fucking opening these. You can see what's in there? Yeah. No, that's that's illegal. Yeah, listen, it's our show. We can do whatever the hell we want. <laughs> I want to see what what movies have the fucking gall to, <laughs> to think that they could replace Jaws on any list whatsoever. The worst thing is going to happen is Tyler's going to have to put three new movies. Yeah. I, I want. I hope they keep the, on putting Bring It On in there. The, all right, new number one, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Get out of here. Get out. Get out. Not replacing Jaws. Number two, Mean Girls. Oh, nope. yeah. Come not on. even, a not classic. even. No. A classic. No. I, I'm so happy Mean Girls is in there. I classic. Like okay, I be, do you had it on your list? I, I must have. I thought I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Who else would have put it okay. in okay. there? Number three, The Florida Project. Wow. Oh, that's Incredible. That's, that's a pretty I sensible that's, double feature. I, I, I very much love that movie. Yep. It's a great movie. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm and uh, Big Trouble in Little China. Come on, Dan. <laughs> That's so Dan it. <laughs> this is a Dan ass movie. That's a Dan ass movie. All right. So, All right. these are the four movies that tried to come at the king. Could you imagine? The Great White. For some reason, we were like, "Hey, let's gamble." Jaws. Yeah. 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 Let's gamble. We can find. Let's. There's one in there that's better than Jaws. Yeah. yeah. Well, with, with, I, what's, I might have done the Florida Project just because I want to see the world burn. I love. Um, I love that movie. <laughs> okay. Number Wait. number one for me. Number four for Dan. Dan. Number 30, 31. One for you. Yeah. Where is that's this? that's top ten, right? It's, it's gotta, gotta be. be. It's gotta be. Son of a. I knew he was. I knew he was gonna this, do it. It's this top ten thing. We found a top ten movie, ranking to be revealed in a later episode. So it's in the top 10. We got some question marks, the same as we did with- I don't uh, like this. T2. Uh, with T2. And that's, Star Wars. T2 in the top 10. And I think-, I think oh, Wait, was Star Wars in the top 10? Star no, Wars? Star Wars wasn't in the top Star, 10. Star Wars in, in the top 10? Star Wars was like, it was like 19 or, ah. or something like that. So, it, hey, congratulations, Jaws. For top being 10. top 10. Hopefully the Spielberg feels Ooh, better. T2? 
Like, well, are I, we in I, top five? A little here? curious about what later, how later an episode are we talking about before we get a review? Yeah, because we're not, we're it's a, whole, there's a lot of numbers. Hey, listen, we're, we've done, this is what, like 28, 29 episodes of this. We're about a third of the way through. Well, a fourth week. Some of them have been not top 100s, but wow. wrapping up season two here in a little bit. In fact, uh, because that's going to do it for us this week, uh, next week will be the last episode of season two. Um, the, our community season wraps up uh, with, Boogie Nights. So we're going to oh. go from Martha's Vineyard straight to the San Fernando Valley. Yeah. <laughs> As one does. Watch, uh, watch some- we're going to watch the different kind of shark. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> uh, but that is going to do it for us this week. Uh, we've received our orders to sail back to Boston. So farewell and adieu to ye fair Spanish ladies. And thanks for watching Jaws, my favorite movie of all time with me. I really appreciate it. Uh, and thanks to you for watching, uh, and thanks to our own fair Spanish ladies here at Cinefix, producer Tayo Yakin, technical producer Marian Franzen, and DP Jamie Parslow, and as usual, Dan malfunctioned, and we've had to shoot around him this whole time. Uh, so, way to go. Uh, and not even in like a creatively fulfilling way. It's no, in a worse ass. way. It's yeah. a pain in the ass the whole time. Uh, so come back next week. We'll watch Boogie Nights. We'll wrap up our community season of uh, the Cinefix Top 100. And in the meantime, stay safe, be good. We'll see you then.